Now, if you made six of those up, um, you could actually sell those as precision engineers coasters. You could even anodize them to make them look really nice and put them in a little holder. And that was a demonstration of my ready-made faceplate tool post drill in action. Um, I saw these on Banggood and thought, well, they'd make a great um, faceplate tool post drill. It's one of those right-angled drilling attachments um, which you get for drilling in very tight spaces. You just put that on the end of the drill and you can actually use it in uh, kitchen cupboards and um, things like that for doing drilling. And um, it has bearings in both ends, so it's quite a nice quality tool. Um, very good chuck on there, which is 1.5 to 10 millimeter um, holding and um, very low cost. So um, it's a really great tool for doing this type of work. And again, just like the um, other tool post drills I've shown, you can actually just power it with ordinary battery drills, um, power drills, or the um, flexi drives. And the fixture I use is the one that I um, made up um, in the other video for holding these um, Banggood uh, flexi drive um, drills. Um, all I had to do was cut out a section here so that I could actually get the um, drill chuck on there and um, I think it's a really great tool like I say for this type of work. Now the other thing I want to show you today is this um, new motor which I got from Banggood. Um, it's a 300 watt motor and it has a working voltage of 12 to 48 volt DC. I think you can buy it on its own, but I got it as a um, kit with the actual uh, drive unit. And again, just like the other Matchfit motor um, that I showed in previous videos, um, it's really high quality um, unit. This one's made out of all aluminium. You have 230 volts or 115 volts. You just slide the switch um, to whatever you're gonna use. Um, it's very easy and straightforward to um, wire up, very clearly um, uh, marked on the front there. And I'm using UK um, 220 volts, so it's live neutral earth there. And then you have um, three terminals for volts um, negative and another three terminals for volts um, positive. So I presume you can actually connect it up to several different things. So then you just wire it up to whatever way um, you want the motor to rotate. Obviously for cutting or tool cutting um, it needs to go anti-clockwise um, looking from the front. And this motor has a really nice heavy um, chrome finish on it and the fan at the back to keep it cool. Um, this one differs in the other one I had, um, it has the external ports for the brushes which is really handy and being 48 volts you can just wire it up without any um, fear of electric shock. The unit also has a cover to actually cover the terminals but obviously this would have to be housed in a, um, another box to make it safe. 
And this power supply unit um, differs from the other one that I um, showed in that it has an internal fan um, which switches on according to the working temperature of the unit. And again it comes with a already wired up speed control potentiometer and the unit actually puts out 7.5 amps. It also comes with this heavy duty aluminium fixture to hold the motor with the uh, four 6mm allen bolts. And it was fitted with this um, ER11 um, collet chuck with one um, collet in it for taking small um, tools. I don't like the ER11 collet chucks because I find them too small and fiddly to use. Very hard to get the actual um, collets out. So I've replaced it with the ER16 um, collet chuck, um, much better size. And um, if you want to know how to get the ER11 collet chuck off of that spindle, you'll have to look at my um, last video on the 100 volt um, motor. I used a special um, pipe um, vise to go over the diameter here loosely and then I used an extractor to pull it off. There's no other way of actually getting that um, collet chuck off of that spindle without an extractor. And you can buy these ER16 collet chucks just like the ER11 um, collet chuck with the 8mm through hole which is the spindle size. Mine was relatively um, easy to push on although I did use Loctite 638 to make sure it's absolutely rock solid. Um, they do have grub screws here but um, for drilling and that you need it absolutely solid. And if in the future I want to get that one off of the spindle again, all as I do is um, heat this up with a small gas torch until I see a bit of a vapour coming off um, from where the Loctite has softened and then that one will pull off. And that is the only way you can actually uh, break Loctite 638. And the bearings in this one actually feel um, better than the um, 100 volt um, motor one that I had. I have changed the bearings in that one. Um, incidentally, I did actually think that maybe um, I could actually use these for small uh, milling work if I changed the bearings on the um, 100 volt um, one. Um, that's not the case. Um, you can't really do milling with it at all. They are only um, small drilling work um, motors on the lathe, like I've shown. Um, I don't mind that at all because when I'm making valves um, mainly they're out of brass or aluminium so they're absolutely ideal for small drilling work. And I hope to show the 100 volt um, matchy fit motor again, uh, the one that I've changed the bearings in. I've also fitted a thrust bearing on the front here which turned out really good. I've got to make a cover for that and like I say I'll show that one in a later video. So for small precise um, tool post drilling um, like that they're absolutely excellent and great for batch work. Um, 
I'm very pleased with these motors.